Wes Marion. Wes is the CEO of Gap Games. For the past 12 years, including as a college student, he has been chasing his dream of starting a successful business. After many failed companies and stints in consulting, he started Gap Games five years ago. The company has created 20 plus games, including Go Boards, It's in the Bag, and more. Has anyone heard of any of these games, by the way? No worries. Yes, we do. We have some fans. All right, we have some, some fans in the room. Uh, he has a blast doing creative projects while bringing joy to families and friends around the world. So please welcome Wes Marion. Thanks for having me today. Um, my wife was making fun of me because I, when I got dressed today, I wore this graphic tee, which is one of our characters in our games, and she's like, you're, they're going to think you're like a kid or something. And then I show up and Russ is all business professional over here, and so I, did, I do feel a little bit like a kid, but you got to represent the, the company, right? Um, I'm just going to set these up so you guys can kind of see them a little bit better, but not that it matters. Um, so, okay, so what I'm going to talk about today is a few things. Um, one of the main points that I want to make today is that anybody, every single one of you, can start a business and it is a lot easier nowadays than ever before. Um, and it doesn't have to be crazy. And um, but I do want to just go into talking about my family a little bit. Um, this is my family. I'm the I'm the tenth child of eleven kids. So um, this is me. <laughs> um, and uh, it's funny because and the and what I wanted to say was um, when it comes to um, there's been a lot of studies that have been done about CEOs. And um, the CEOs of the world are generally the first child um, of a family. So who's the first child of the family in here? So you have like a 40% chance of being higher than other people of being a CEO, which is pretty cool. Um, as you can see, I'm not the first child. Um, I'm also not the last child, which there are benefits of being the last child too. I'm just somewhere in the middle. I don't even know if they have stats on the 10th child, um, but here I am. So maybe this is, uh, maybe I'm the case study. But um, the funny thing is, is every single one of my siblings um, has kind of bucked that trend. Every single one of them is a CEO or have started their own company. Even my brother, who's a doctor, has his own practice. Um, and I don't know if that's because we're part of, we're related to the Marriott Hotel family or something, or it, maybe it's because we're on the poor side of the family and we have a chip on our shoulder. I don't know. But we're all entrepreneurs in our own right. And so if nothing else, if you don't learn anything else today, every single one of you can start a business and you can be successful in that business. Um, and what I do want to talk about today is some of my failed businesses. And so one of my best, my best advices to all of you is to fail a business before leaving college. Um, that takes a lot of the pressure off, right? <laughs> if your goal is to fail the business. Um, <clears throat> the first one I wanted to talk about is cover play. I'm going to have to learn how to talk to both of you guys like this. Maybe I should feel like this. So I'm looking at all of you and not talking to your backs. Um, cover play was, um, to be honest, a terrible name for a company. Um, it doesn't make any sense. It's a Bluetooth speaker. Um, my brothers and I started it, and we it's paper thin Bluetooth speaker. And we're like, we're going to be cutting edge. This is going to be the best thing. Um, the, 
music industry has ever seen. And um, we launched on Kickstarter and raised thirty thousand dollars. And we were stoked. We got some investors, all this stuff. And this is kind of how it looked when we did stuff. <clears throat> that was our first mold of the um, speaker casing. Um, it was a fail. It was really bad. We eventually got it to kind of look like the speaker's supposed to, um, but that's kind of the first step in it. We got our molds back. The product didn't work very well and um, kind of tried to salvage what we could of the situation. A lot of people weren't very happy with us. Um, they still got a speaker. It, they didn't look like that, I'll be honest. It, it looked more like that. But this is kind of what encapsulates our business experience with CoverPlay. Um, eventually, um, we got into a few good things. Like we got into some like um, retail spaces with it, but literally it ran it ran it into the ground. Like lost the investors' money. Um, didn't do very well with it. Um, then I was like kind of hooked on this entrepreneurial thing, and so I was doing like phone cases, um, a few other speed dating. That was the most. I still have PTSD from that business. Um, <laughs> Because you get people together and like I didn't organize it very well and the guys and girls are kind of looking at each other before and it was like this weird meat market kind of thing and had, it was weird. I paid, they had to pay five dollars to get in. Nobody had a good experience, um, but it was but it was something, right? So <laughs> what I'm trying to point to right now is while in college you have an opportunity to fail. You have an awesome opportunity to try things and nobody's gonna care if you fail. You will, it, it's, not, it's not a happy time to fail a business, but you will be benefited by doing it while you're in college because it's kind of a safe space. Um, all the, and on top of it, if you don't want to do entrepreneurship ever and you just experience it while you're in college, it can land you a good job. So, when I went to my interviews for Accenture, which is a consulting company, all I told about was my failures from cover play and a number of other things. And they're like, wow, great experience. You're hired. And that's literally kind of how I got the job was that I had this experience running a business. And um, so my advice to all of you is to try something now while you're in the safe zone. Because once you get out into the world, everyone's like, oh, what business are you working on? And then it fails, and then you have to tell this whole story. But you're like, no, 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 I'm in college. I'm just, you know, I tried this. I'm in college. It's fine. I'm, I still got time to do lots of things. So that's my advice is to try and fail a business before leaving college. And who knows, it may actually be a success, and you'll have some good experience from that. Um, so while I was at Accenture, um, I actually absolutely hated Accenture. Um, I hated corporate America. I had to travel every week, which seems sexy at first, um, but it's really just living in a hotel and working crazy hours. And um, at the time, um, who is here? Who here has heard of Exploding Kittens? Yeah, you guys haven't heard my games, but that right? okay. I see how it is. Uh, just kidding. That game is gone crazy. So Exploding Kittens um, in 2015 raised, um, went on Kickstarter. Who knows the story about Exploding Kittens? So um, in a month it raised eight million dollars and it's just a dumb little card game. And while I was at Accenture I was like I need to do something creative and entrepreneurial that's easy on the side and I was like these guys made eight million in like a month and a stupid card game, like I can easily do that. So I'm like, I'll make a card game. So I made Goat Lords and I raised $4,800. <laughs> so for me, I, I'd been down the path of failing businesses before and I was at Accenture and I was like, ah, this is probably just a fail. Um, it was a good experience, it was fun, it was a creative outlet. I raised $5,000. But that following year, in 2016, do you want me to move back a little bit on this so that I'm not echoing? I don't know if that's a, that feedback is annoying everyone or not, but 
in 2016, um, Amazon was still like, it was growing, but it wasn't as crazy as it is now, like where they just own the universe. Um, at that time, I was like, I'm just gonna learn how to do an Amazon business. And I just doubled down, and on the side, while I was doing other startup stuff, I um, decided to really learn Amazon and put GoWords on there and just see what would happen. And um, I, you know, I can call it, you can call it whatever you want. I call it the hand of God, but that Christmas, I, you know, you guys are looking at 4,800. I actually ended up selling <clears throat> out of all, I, I bought with that 4,800 about 2,000 units of Goat Lords and um, ended up selling through almost all of them during that Christmas, which is not crazy. It's like $50,000. But for me, I was like, whoa, this is, this is interesting. Like this is a lot different than the, the $5,000. And it was because I just put time and effort into learning what everyone can learn on Amazon. Um, and so I went in, yeah, choosing a path. So basically after that Christmas, I sat down and I was like, what do I do with my, um, with my life? At that time, I'd already, I was done with Accenture and um, I was trying to do my own startup stuff and I was like, this was a total fail, but then it kind of looked like it might be something. And so while I, I'm a religious person, so I kind of involve um, God a lot in my decision making. And while I was praying about it, I felt like I should do games, board games and card games. And literally everyone was so confused. They're like, hey, that was fun, but like, what are you doing with your life? Like, you're making card games and board games. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of weird. Like literally I was, and, and at the time I was single too, so that didn't help on my dating prospects. Um, Cause people would, I'd be on a date and like, what are you doing for work? And I'm like, I'm making a car game. <laughs> and they're like, okay, um, so you're broke. Uh, what do you, <laughs> you know, like you don't have a job. And, um, and it, was, it was an interesting time for me, I'll be honest. I, I didn't really, my, and I, I'll be honest, until like probably a year and a half ago, my mom still still was sending me job job um, openings places. She's like, here, check out this. And I'm like, mom, I'm doing, a, I'm running this company. Like, l leave me alone. She's like, yeah, but this one looks nice. And I'm like, okay, you're concerned about me. I get it. Um, but I'm going to keep down this path. And... Um, so I kind of chose that path and went down the Gatwick Games um, uh, path, and it, it literally has been such a huge blessing for me in so many ways, and I'll kind of explain that. But today I want to just explain the Amazon process and how you guys can start your business today um, using Amazon. But before I do that, we're going to do a game. We're going to play a game. We're gonna do some games. It's, I mean, I'm a game company, I have to, right? Um, so, I just need two volunteers, one from here and one from this section. All right, back row. Um, and you can't, have you ever played Goat Lords before? No. Never heard of it? No. Perfect, okay. Um, over here, volunteer. Oh, come on, guys, it's not that scary, okay. It's, it's actually gonna be like two seconds, I'm just, I just want you guys to be involved a little bit. Okay, so um, the winner, okay, you're, I'm going to both give you Goat Lords. Goat Lords basically is a game where you s build um, goat herds. So there's a bunch of different goats in here, and you're stealing each other's goats, and you're blowing each other's goats up. Super random. Um, but there's a bunch of random goats in here, okay? So... On the count of three, I'm going to show you guys a goat up here. Wait, what are you guys' names? AJ? Rebecca, okay. All right. If she gets it, you guys get a chance for the Goat Lords trivia. Same thing over here. So let's hear some cheering for your team. Uh, okay. So on three, I'm going to say, what is this goat called? And you guys have to find it. And the first person to find it wins, okay? Okay, ready? One, two, three. Come on, let's cheer them on, guys. Yeah. 
Come on, let's go. Keep looking. You're not. You're not close. Keep going. <laughs> you got to dump him out like he did. Oh, he's falling. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Who Who has a goat bark over here? No, you don't know what it is. Any guesses of what this goat is called? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no, it's in there. Oh. Ah, scapegoat. She got it first. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give it to Rebecca. Everyone cheer for Rebecca here. Sorry, guys. Hey, nice job. Um, we're going to both give you guys a go, Lords. Brand new one. So now you now you know what the game is and you can play with your friends. Yeah, nice. <laughs> okay, so this side for a doodle face. Who can guess this right? Um, okay, so what trivia? Do I, how much did? Um, and if you guys can't guess it right, then it goes over to this side. I guess we'll do that. We'll give it to you guys. Okay, so how much did Goat Lords raise dollar amount on its Kickstarter? Okay. Is it about like 4,804? That is it. Give it up for <laughs> Doodle Face is a um, drawing game. You draw each other's faces. Okay. It's like telestrations, but you draw each other's faces. It's fun. It's good for parties. Um, okay. Nice job. We're going to have a couple of these throughout, um, so get excited. Okay, so... Um, so wait, what was the name of that? No, the scapegoat. Escape Did you get it? <laughs> scapegoat. It's a pun, right? You get it? <laughs> For all those who don't know, escape, a scapegoat, have you guys heard of that? You guys have taken history class, right? Somebody who's made it through a scapegoat, like you, you basically blame something that's not on them, like like the punishment goes on to somebody as a scapegoat. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Look it up. Okay. Um, <laughs> Russ has got it. Russ has got it. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, okay, so what happened next in, at Gatwick Games is what we did. Um, what I decided to do was, hey, I'm new to this game stuff. Like, I love games. I've played it my whole life. But I'm new to this, so I actually went on to Kickstarter because um, I saw that my Goat Lords was kind of a fail on Kickstarter, right? I mean, it wasn't a fail, but it raised five thousand dollars about, and um, raising five thousand dollars seemed like a fail to me. And so I thought, you know, there's probably other people out there who have raised around that amount, who have a good game, but just feel like it's a fail. So I actually went to a couple people on Kickstarter, like the Golfing Dead and What Are the Odds? Both those, What Are the Odds raised like, I don't know, $2,000 on Kickstarter and Golfing Dead raised like 9,000. But they were like, ah, we're not gonna do anything anymore. So I went to them and I said, hey, I'll buy that game from you for a thousand or two, whatever. And they're like, oh sure, we'll take a couple thousand dollars for this game that I'm not gonna do anything with. So I just bought these games, and then I rebranded them and put them back on the market. And since then, both those games have made over a hundred thousand dollars just by just being there, right? So like, <laughs> like, so I actually don't know the exact numbers, but I think it's probably even more more than a hundred thousand dollars. But just those two games, I was just like, sure, I'll try that, and and not worry about having to create my own games. Um, once I got started, I actually doubled down on Amazon, really learned it um, well. Back then, it was the Wild West of Amazon. Like, you could just do kind of anything. It was kind of like you could mess with the system and they, you wouldn't get in trouble as much. And these days, they'll get shut down if you try and game it too much. And there's just all sorts of regulations. But we, we doubled down on, um, and I say we, but it was only me at the time. But, um, Doubled down on Amazon, and that second year, um, I um, 
four times the amount of sales, which is, for me, it was wild. Because the first year was about 50,000, and then the second year was like 250,000. So I was like, okay, so I'm like on a good trajectory here. But I will be honest, I hadn't paid myself anything at that point. Because what you do is you make the money and then you have to buy more inventory to continue growing your business. So it's kind of a hard situation where you want to pay yourself. And you could pay yourself a little bit, but I wanted to keep growing the company a lot. So I put all the money that I made straight back into inventory and buying more and creating other games. Um, I, uh, we also, this is a later picture with um, one of the guys that worked with me. He doesn't work at the company anymore, but we went to retail conferences like crazy. Um, and some of them actually panned out. But the funny thing about retail conferences is that um, it's like a two-year process. Like I'm, we met some people that worked at Barnes and Noble like two and a half years ago, and just barely Goat Lords was put into all the Barnes and Nobles after like two and a half years of working with these people. So that's one way that you can work with um, growing your business. Um, also, Kickstarter. So Kickstarter was a failure, I'll be honest. 5,000 isn't amazing, but it's not bad to get things going. Um, but for a lot of you guys, Kickstarter is an amazing way just to launch a product and get a little bit of income right from the start, and that will kind of push your company forward. And that helped me be able to buy the 2,000 units for Goat Lords and then resell. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I could, I could definitely talk about that. Um, Kickstarter, it's interesting. So it depends on the product you're you're launching. Um, if it's really innovative and cool and different, like then you have a really good shot at launching a good campaign and doing well. Like if you saw, like, Coverplay was innovative and different. We raised thirty thousand, which isn't like a crazy amount of money, but it is like a good chunk of money for starting a business. Um, it, you know, I still ran it into the ground, but, um, but those will do better than like a game where there's so many games that are launched on Kickstarter. Um, and unless you have a really compelling game creation that, so that's why like, I wish I actually brought them, but I didn't. But we have, um, let's see, did I put a picture of it? No. Um, so we have a game called um, Race Car Riot, and it looks like a Game Boy, the box does, and Dungeon Royale. Um, and it, people are just interested because it play, they play like video games. So like, one, like Race Car Riot plays like Mario Kart. So like you're playing a board game, but it's Mario Kart. So you have a bunch of these like nerds like me who think that's super cool. And on Kickstarter, it, it really takes so if you want to do a Kickstarter, it really takes getting a pre-market um, following. So what we would do is we hire an agency that does Kickstarter-specific um, advertising, and then they put our product everywhere and get a following of about a thousand people. So you, so we had to spend about three to five thousand dollars in advertising before the campaign even started to get about a thousand people into the. Um, into a Facebook group who are all like, yeah, we're all nerds and we love this game and everyone's kind of working together and like getting stoked about it. And then when it launches, everyone goes and backs that. And that day one on Kickstarter is the most important day that you can, um, if, it's, if it's not a good first day, then the campaign's not going to do well. Um, so anyway, Kickstarter is a really powerful way to get your business off the ground. And if you have a following beforehand, that's the only way. And then also the product images and making it look really professional is the only way to do it. Um, if you don't have like a finalized prototype to show people, they won't buy it. Like you guys wouldn't buy it either. If you guys saw just like, here's a drawing of like some cool product that I want. Nobody's, nobody would want to buy that. So they want to see the final product as if they're buying it online like it's done. 
So that's kind of the, the key with Kickstarter is that it has to look basically like it's ready to give to the people, right, as they purchase it. So with your, your blue speaker, was that just a mock-up image that you made? Yeah, so it was actually, it was, we had a finalized prototype, but it was um, 3D printed on high resolution 3D printing. So the, the product was really nice looking, but then when you go to general product creation, it's like, it becomes a little bit different. <laughs> so, and we learned a lot from that. Like we could have done a way better job with the molds and everything. There's a whole story with that, but um, yeah, Kickstarter is a great way to get a product out. Um, and um, what we found is that there's certain audiences that work better. So like Goat Lords, for example, raised $5,000, didn't do that like well, but then Dungeon Royale and Race Cart Riot together have raised about 190,000 because there's a bunch of nerds on, and I say nerds in a loving way because I'm one of them, um, that love like in-depth board games who buy specifically on Kickstarter because they want to be the first to have these cool new games. And so a card game versus uh, in-depth unique board game is is gonna get different crowds buying. So we found that we, if we launch a card game, we don't go to Kickstarter, but if we launch a more in-depth, kind of nerdy board game, then Kickstarter's the right path. So, any other questions on that? <laughs> Problem is I have way, I have too much, yeah, I mean I could talk about it, all this stuff for hours. You spend a little bit of money up front on advertising to get people in a Facebook group who are already playing and liking the game. So they don't they haven't played the game, but they're just interested in the game. Okay. So then those people and sometimes you can have like for example, there are people who are just excited about games in general who want to be in the group, but then there are people who make and we've done this before, you make a digital version of the game. There's there's great resources out there for digital things. Um, and we make a digital version of the game and then um, they can play it online before they've even bought it. <laughs> so it's... So you get your following before you ever launch. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. And there's so many people that launch Kickstarters who are like, I have a cool product, a detailed page is beautiful, awesome, no following, they launch it, nothing happens. So Kickstarter is kind of like you have to pay to play almost, where you have to spend a chunk of money to just get it off the ground. And then while the Kickstarter is running, we actually have ads running as well. So there's a lot of, there's a lot that goes into it. But my number one advice on Kickstarter is just if you are launching a product, don't launch it unless you feel like that product is like 95 to 100% done. Because if it's not, then you won't sell as well. It's just just how it goes. So, any other questions on that? He's taking notes. He's the only one taking notes, but you know, it's okay. He's the teacher. <laughs> he's, take, he's, he's getting to the quiz questions. Um, so basically, Gatwick Games today, yeah, this is our, so we actually did, I had an old truck and we put carpet on it, gave it some ears and horns and we drive around with it. It's like the Dumb and Dumber truck um, or van or whatever, except it's not a dog. Um, and it kind of just advertises for Gatwick Games. Um, we try and get people off their screens um, to play more games because screen time dis, you know, distracts people from relationships. Yeah. Did you drive it here today? I did. I should have driven it here today. I should have. Sometimes I get a little sketched out when I drive on the freeway because I feel like something's going to go flying off and hit someone. So. A little, it was like an hour and 20 minute drive down here, so I was like, ah. But 
if I did, I definitely would have had you guys come and look at it. Um, so Gala Games today is, um, we have a bunch of part-time employees. We have a few, I have a few um, full-time employees. Um, we've sold almost 250,000 games um, and we're having fun. So, um, and this is, you know, five years of work, but, so this is what I actually want to talk about was the Amazon product companies. So, um, how many of you guys buy on Amazon? You like have an Amazon account, actually. So some of you, and then some of you use your friends or your parents or something like that. But everyone's bought on Amazon before, right? Um, Amazon is so easy to access for the buyer, but also for the seller. So Amazon actually makes it really easy. There's thousands. So the reason I love product companies, I've had a lot of experience in them, but the reason I love product companies is because there's so many products in the world and people are always looking for whatever product you have in mind. Um, there's some stat that says like, always, there's always like 4% of the population looking for something that, or something like that. I'm probably making that up. Don't write that out for the quiz. Um, so the, the reason that I love product companies is because manufacturing has never been so easy. The act accessibility through China and selling the product has never been so easy. In the olden days, you go to like farmers markets or you go out on the street and you sell to the mom and pop people. It's never been so easy to sell products. Um, and if you look at all these, like that's, here, I'm probably gonna go into it. Amazon's annual net um, revenue from Amazon sales just continues to skyrocket. They're obviously in the billions, but it just continues to grow. And last year was even bigger than they've ever done before. So right now, it is more accessible. I wish I screenshotted the bottom because there's over a million third-party sellers. And third-party sellers is like me. It's just like a random person selling the products on Amazon. That could be anybody, any one of you. Like today, you could sign up today and start selling. Um, okay, game time. Do we have time? What time is it? Okay, let's do game time. Uh, two volunteers. Okay, we got one back here. Oh, you have a question. I'll, I'll come play the game, but uh, you come. Yeah, come up. Come on up. What? Yeah, I will actually go into that um, after we play this game. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so It's in the Bag is a very easy, it's kind of a mix between charades and catchphrase. We're going to just play it backwards today. Um, and we're only going to do one. So, what's your name? Harry. Harry. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're going to do it backwards this time. This isn't actually how you play it, but... You're going to be looking at everyone out here, okay? And they are going to be acting out what's on the board, and you have to guess what, what it is, okay? Okay. Okay? And you only have 30 seconds. Okay. So the, the real question is, is everyone he, out here ready? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are ready? Okay, they're, they're a little asleep, but it's okay. Um, you guys will help them. Okay, you guys ready? I'm going to actually put it on for 30 seconds. Okay. Ready? Set? Go. Act it out. Act it out. Rat. 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 Okay. Okay. Next. Pass. Hat. Got it. Ooh. Celery. <laughs> You've almost got it. Keep keep Chips. going. Yep. Yep. That's it. Well, that's close enough. Okay. <laughs> Okay, is that? No, we're on to the next one. Uh, <laughs> doctor. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, got it. 
<laughs> All right, nice job, nice job. Nicely done. Um, I have another one, but we're kind of out of time. Nice job, everyone. Hey, give you guys a round of applause. That was real action. Okay, this one. I want to do the wave because that would have been hilarious just watching. <laughs> wave back and forth. Um, no, we don't have time because I want to get started on Amazon business. I want you guys all to start your Amazon businesses. So getting started on Amazon um, is actually really easy. So what was your name back there? The Harry. Harry. Um, Harry's question actually is really um, important because it actually is an there's some complexity with everything you do in life. Um, and Amazon is no, um, it, it's complex at times. So what I would suggest, getting started on Amazon, if you want to start a business, startup costs are probably around $2,000 to $5,000. I know it sounds like a lot, but the returns are great. So the first thing that I would say is take a mini course um, there's thousands and thousands of university, set, there's Seller University for Amazon, it's just, you can just go on it for free, look at all their videos. There's paid ones, um, like um, Helium 10 has like a paid one for like $500, um, but has hours and hours, and you guys are all doing college right now, you guys know how it is, but you could spend maybe two to three hours a week for the next month and a half and know how to start a business on Amazon. Like, you would know pretty much everything you need to know to get started. And, um, you know, you guys are doing college right now and obviously you guys are kind of going through the motions at times. I know I was a college student. Um, so you need a little bit more like, I'm, I actually want to do this. But if you just took a mini course on Amazon, you, I think you would see a lot of the um, benefits from doing an Amazon business. Um, the steps that are important with Amazon is market research. So, you, there, so basically every time you search for something on Amazon, um, there are keywords associated with what you're search, searching for. And then Al Amazon has an algorithm behind the scenes that says, hey, when somebody searches this, this is generally what people buy. And so you have to work with algorithms. We made this game Raining Unicorns um, because we did market research and a lot of people were searching unicorns game, but there's only like one unicorns game. So we decided to make a unicorns game because people love unicorns, obviously. And, um, and two, there wasn't as much um, market com competition. So you could actually go into it and search and say unicorns game and now there's two or three games showing up, but at least one of ours is there and you have more likely. And there was the, the amount of unicorns and unicorns game searches were going through the roof last year. And so we were like, hey, let's do some market research. We capitalize on this, make a game that's based around unicorns. So the mini course would teach you kind of how to do this market research, um, but there's a lot of search terms out there that have holes that you can put a product in and do well with. Harry. So uh, if, you, if you're following the trend of like unicorn search trends go, goes up, do you just like have a bunch of games you can insert any keyword into? Like um, yeah, I mean kind of, I mean this doesn't have to be about unicorns. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, I mean it's a fun game, the mechanics are all there, but we're like let's draw some unicorns and have you know our artists do these things and make a unique triangle box, you know. Raining unicorns, and it has a headband in it, a rainbow headband. Like, who doesn't want that, right? So we do things that are like a little bit unique, just to try and make us stand out on the Amazon pages when when they show up. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of search terms now. It's different because this is where you pick a product. So a commodity versus a unique IP is it's important to have the distinction between those two. So like. Um, Let's see, like mustaches. We have a bunch of these mustaches. If you search mustaches, 
for like sticky mustaches on Amazon, there's a thousand of these. There's just tons of them, and you're like, how do I know which one to buy? And then you look and you're like, oh, this one has 20,000 reviews. I'll just buy that. Or this one's the cheapest, so depending on what you're looking for, right? But if you search unicorn game, there's only one of these, right? So that's where you're dealing with. There's two different things. When, um, when COVID hit, um, there were probably three mask companies on Amazon, maybe two, right? And, the, and it went through the roof, right? So suddenly everyone's buying masks and there's the people filling the holes with opportunities. And people are poised and ready to just act and say, okay, we can make a, a mask company, we're gonna sell it on Amazon, get a bunch of reviews, and then make a ton of money off of it because they're filling in a need that people are looking for. And so that's kind of where you kind of, it's a commodity, but you can debate where you can make something that's really repeatable and co people can copy or something that's unique. I love the unique stuff because I don't have to worry that anyone's gonna steal this game because it's, it's kind of hard to do that. Like they'd have to make the exact, exact game. So, so there's difference. It has less search volume, but it, there's definitely more of that. Go ahead. Do you have like copyrights and like patents on your games? Um, trademarks. Okay. Um, and copyrights. Copyrights are just um, automatic, basically. As soon as something is published, um, your stuff is copyrighted. So if you like published a book, self-published, it's automatically going to be copyrighted. Um, uh, trademarks, you have to file for trademarks, which just gives you the right to sell that product under that name. So Raining Unicorns has a trademark that no one else can come and say, hey, I want to sell my game Raining Unicorns, whatever. Okay. Um, Al Alibaba is so easy. Literally, so this is a perfect example. I wish I had opened it, but um, Raining Unicorns, we just searched on Alibaba, headbands. And then there was somebody who was doing, there's like a thousand people who are doing headbands. We wanted a rainbow headband, but we wanted it to have a unicorn horn on it. So super unique, different. We just reached out to probably 15 manufacturers in China and said, hey, can you do this? This is what we're trying to do. Half of them said, no, we can't do it. Some are like, yep, yeah, well, we can totally do that, and this is the cost. Um, so easy, we had them do it. They send it to our game manufacturer, they package it, send it over here. We didn't even have to really do anything. It was just a few emails, sending them direction. This is so accessible to every single, every single one of you, like this guy on his phone right here. He could just look up on Alibaba and he wouldn't even know that I'm talking about it. Um, <laughs> still doesn't know he's ta I'm talking about it. But anybody, you can get on your phone right now and look at Alibaba, type in something that you're interested in, and then go find it, buy it, send it here, sell it on Amazon, just like that. Now it's not like super, it's not that simple, but it really is that simple. Like I'm just trying to put it in your mind that you guys can start your own business very easily. Um, and then obviously you ship it to the United States and you sell and advertise on Amazon. And that kind of comes back to the whole process of like doing a mini course on Amazon because it'll show you how to set up a listing, it'll show you how to advertise, which is really important, advertising is really important. Um, I'm out of time, but 2000 to $5,000, you could start a business, and if you did it on Kickstarter, maybe even less, and it could get you going. That's what I did, and it worked. Um, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. Warren Buffett. Um, Amazon's awesome because literally you sell while you're asleep. It just continues to sell. I'm right now making money because somebody's buying games on Amazon at this moment while I'm teaching. Um, I have a lot of thoughts on a lot of this stuff, but um, what I do want to talk about, <laughs> I don't have time for all this. Anyway. Last, last point that I want to make before I end is just um, the point of um, you guys will all find your path. Um, and I believe in divine providence. I believe in God. Um, and 
the one thing that I wanted to say was when I was at Accenture, that, that consulting company, um, I really didn't, I really wanted to do entrepreneurship, but I didn't want to leave a high paying job. And I was really nervous about leaving of a high paying job and I didn't know what my path was going to be. And so one day I decided I, I was going to pray about it and figure out what I should do. Whether you're religious or not, it doesn't matter. But um, when I prayed about it, I felt that I would be taken care of and that um, everything would work out. And literally the next, the very next day, um, I got fired from Accenture. I got let go. Um, and if you talk about divine providence, you wouldn't think that that is the path that um, God would want for you to lose your job. And, um, but it was what opened the door for me to, to start doing my own things and kind of burn the ships and kind of go forward. And I think that every single one of you has, a, has an opportunity right now in the age of technology to start a business and to do great things. Um, but a lot of, a lot of our paths um, has to do with the divine providence in my mind. And so I appreciate you guys taking the time and for participating. And um, I guess we're going to ask some questions after or something. But um, thanks. I also have, for anybody leaving, you can take some, yeah, well, if you want, it's in the bag. Okay, this guy, this guy gets it. He asked for it, so he gets it. Who wants it? Who wants raining unicorns? <laughs> Who wants raining unicorns?